The equipment needed for this experiment, two ring stands, one for the funnel support and the other for the burette holder, water manometer including leveling bulb, rubber tubing and pinch clamp, plus a one meter stick and 600 milliliter beaker for filling manometer. When attaching the funnel support, the groove side is up so that it better supports the leveling bulb. When placing the water manometer, be sure that the zero reading is at the top. Attach the small piece of tubing to the top of the burette. Add water to manometer through the leveling bulb. Get rid of the air bubbles in the leveling bulb tubing. Raise and lower the leveling bulb, taking care not to raise it above the top of the manometer to avoid giving everyone a shower. Once the air bubbles are removed, move the funnel support so that it is near the level of water in the manometer. 30 milliliters is an acceptable volume. Using the pinch clamp, clamp off the tubing at the top and mark the clamp's position. Now the first measurement is ready to be taken. Take the leveling bulb and line it up with the water level in the manometer. Record the volume reading from the manometer. Note that the height difference measurements of the water levels will be negative when the leveling bulb water surface is below the water level in the manometer and positive when above the water level in the manometer. Two students are required for this part. One student will keep the meter stick aligned with the water level in the manometer and the second student will align the leveling bulb water level with the meter stick. Starting with the negative height measurements, slide the manometer to the edge of the bench. The zero end of the meter stick will be aligned with the water level in the manometer. The second student will lower the water level of leveling bulb to negative 50 centimeters. Meanwhile, the first student will be keeping the end of the meter stick aligned with the water level in the manometer. Once achieved, record the volume reading of the manometer along with the reading from the meter stick. This procedure will be repeated for minus 100 centimeters below. Note that each measurement will be done twice. Repeat minus 50 centimeters and minus 100 centimeter measurements along with the one at equal water levels. The positive measurements are usually done on the floor. Now that negative height differences have been completed, the measurements for the positive height differences will be made. The first student will align the water level in the manometer with the zero end of the meter stick with the 100 centimeter reading pointing toward the ceiling. The second student will raise the leveling bulb until the water level in it aligns with the positive 50 centimeter mark. Meanwhile, the first student must keep the meter stick aligned with the water level in the manometer. Repeat for positive 100 centimeters. Once measurements for positive 50 and positive 100 centimeters are repeated, take temperature of water and record. To determine the volume of the uncalibrated part of the manometer, that volume will be filled with water and measured using a 10 ml graduated cylinder. Take the manometer and leveling bulb to the nearest sink. Flip the manometer so tubing with clamp is on the bottom. Place leveling bulb in sink and detach from the manometer. Using the pinch clamp, let water flow from the manometer until the zero mark is reached. Check to see there is no excess water in the tubing. Transfer water from uncalibrated volume of manometer to 10 ml graduated cylinder and record this measurement. This is the volume of water trapped in the tubing.
Now we are moving on to part B. For the determination of R, the universal gas constant, we will use potassium chlorate. You will need a reaction tube. You will need bent glass tubing with rubber tubing attached. We will now demonstrate how to fill the reaction tube. Place the opening of the reaction tube in the bottle of potassium chlorate. Give it a twist and turn the tube upright and there should be about a, the sample size needed. Now that the reaction tube contains potassium chlorite, go to the analytical balances and weigh this. You do not need to weigh the empty reaction tube. Attach the reaction tube to the rubber tubing on the bent glass tube. Dip the other end of the rubber tube into water to facilitate attaching. Be careful not to get the bent glass tube wet. Attach this to the top of the water manometer. The water level should be between 0 and 1 milliliter on the manometer. Now you are ready to take the initial burette reading and record the value. The water levels in the manometer and leveling bulb must be aligned to be sure that the volume measurements are done at the same pressure. Recall what was learned in Part A and the relationship between P and V. Return leveling bulb to funnel support. Before heating, take a look to see that the funnel support and burette holder will not be in the way. Light the Bunsen burner. A small hot flame will do. Remember, the tip of the inner cone is the hottest part of the flame. For this next part, one student will hold the reaction tube and read the burette, while the other will do the heating with the Bunsen burner. The solid will melt to a clear liquid and start to react to form the gas. When the gas level reaches between 30 and 40 milliliters, stop heating. Allow reaction tube to cool to room temperature. The reaction does not stop immediately after removing the heat. While waiting for the reaction tube to cool, take temperature of water and record. Once cool, take final volume manometer reading by aligning water level in manometer with the water level in the leveling bulb and record this reading. Remove the reaction tube and weigh it on an analytical balance. Record this weight. For this lab, you will need the barometric pressure. You can use a barometer or you can Google it.